All right, so we are playing the classic London system here. Um, I could play Bishop F5 or C5. Those are probably the two most common moves. E6 is also playable. I'm going to start with Bishop F5. This is probably one of the most solid uh, solid setups. It's played by Anish Giri from the Netherlands, a very, very famous chess player who, who has played the system. So I'm going to start with this system. It's one of the more solid ways because you try to mirror white. It's like the classic Snow White tell. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? So I'm trying to mirror it a little bit here with the bishops, and I'm going to play Bishop D6. And now I'm playing my own version of a uh, of a London with the black pieces as well. So we get Bishop G5 here. So now he wastes time playing Bishop G5. The pin isn't really a big deal because I can always overprotect. So I'm just going to overprotect the horse with Knight D7, and maybe I'll go H6 and G5 down the road to get rid of this very very mildly annoying pin. He goes Bishop B5. Uh, I'm going to go C6 here. Now I build my classic pyramid of Jesus. So in a sense, I'm playing the London system with the black pieces go queen c7 here maybe i'll castle maybe i'll play knight e4 really you're not preparing for the cans i will prepare uh but i'm a streamer first and um frankly i i'm also gonna give you guys one other little bit of a hot take right now um which is which is that the amount of money that people spend on the candidates is extremely high it's a lot of money a lot of people have to find sponsors and essentially if you don't win the tournament it's all for naught so it's a very very expensive event with generally a low return unless you are the winner of the event now i'm going to play 94 here because if he takes i take back and i can win this pawn on age two so i do want to do well and i am thinking about it but it's not really that big of a deal to me Let me eat some more rice while, while, I'm, while I'm at it. With Bishop H4 being played now, I'm going to go Bishop G4. I'm going to pin his knight. This bishop way off sides here. You see this knight, there's a lot of pressure. He wants this bishop back, but he can't get it back. So now I take. Pin is very, very difficult to deal with here. Very, very difficult position. No Pyramid of Jesus. Well, we, we traded Knights, but he has this big problem with the pin here of the Knight. Basically, I, I would say the I would say this, you guys. Everybody spent, except for the winner of the Candidates Tournament, everyone will have spent more money, probably, than they, um, than they won. Now, they may get sponsors and everything, but the amount of money spent on preparation and seconds for the Candidates is more than, is more money than even second place. So, if Rick takes D1, so I'm going to take a pawn here drop the bishop back to d6 and then play queen a5 queen h5 and win the game yeah basically the amount of money that's spent on preparation is going to be more than um is going to be is going to be more now i'm not saying people spend that it can be sponsored but i'm saying the amount of money that will be spent whether it's your own or from sponsors will be more than every prize than, than every prize except for the winner so can we get bishop b3 i'm gonna go queen h5 win the bishop and with it i should win the game as well after this arena, we will, of course, have some articles to cover. There's an article about who made the most money in chess in the year of 2020, uh, 2023. And um, uh, fun little spoiler, because I did see the list. I haven't read the article, but I did see the list. Um, fun little spoiler. Uh, the top two earners are not on the list. So uh, there's the little spoiler, but we will cover it later on. Now I'm going to go check, check, and mate on G3. Very, very, very classic check mating pattern with the Bishop and the Queen. Sometimes you capture a pawn on F2, but very, very clean. So let's keep going. Next game. Okay, now I'm playing with the white piece. I'm going to play E3 here. Maybe Knight F3, but I maybe want to go C4. Now, second game in a row where an opponent plays Knight to C6, he puts the Knight out in front of the pawn. The previous game, my opponent played Knight C3. But one of the drawbacks is now I can push my pawn and target his center. Well, he cannot contest my center with this pawn pushing C5 because the Knight is now in the way of the pawn. So he takes... Um, now, I could take, and I think I should just take, finish my development here. I've got the two Bs. Bring the Knights out. Knight F3. Castles. Knight C3. Very, very pleasant. Okay. Plays Bishop to D6. Um, I'm going to go Bishop to G3 here. I can take. I can play Knight C3 and go from there. Uh, did I see... Uh, was there, there was some comment. Kramnik's comment on X at GM's extreme. No need to mention. Don't show their calculations for real. That wasn't Kramnik. That was on each gear, I think. Let's play H takes G3 here. Now, this Bishop G3 idea, very common in the London system to where you want to capture it back on G3 with either the H or the F pawn. So now I'm going to develop my knight. Now, because he's opened the file super early, he's allowed me to maybe consider playing Queen C2 and pressuring the pawn on H7. 
maybe i can go queen c2 and castle as long i don't have to but there are options available since he traded so so early now if i were to castle it's fine too but because he ca because he captured before i castled i do have this extra option available so let's see uh let's let's see what my opponent is going to do he decides to play the move e5 now i can take with a pawn i can also take with a knight um i think i will just take with the pawn could take with the knight too i think i'll just take eh, knight takes 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 knight g4 could be a slight issue but i i feel like taking with a pawn should be correct so i can take with the rook i can go knight d5 pressure pawn on c7 so let's play it rook takes d1 here let's see what orda koba does here if he takes he loses the knight now he could play knight g4 he could also play knight d7 let's see what he chooses to play he decides to go bishop e6 which just allows me to trade take the knight and now i simply have one extra horse on the board after pawn takes knight uh no handshake by duda for his Matulin. it's been discussed i already spoke about it a little bit i mean I, I i don't really i don't think it's that big of a deal honestly fide obviously can't do anything about it uh, even if they wanted to uh considering their connections to russia but uh not not really uh not really a big deal so i'm gonna play 94 hit the rook on f6 also i thought his Matulin's response or even if you don't like the guy was pretty level-headed all things being considered he said it's his decision he can do whatever he wants and i, I thought that was kind of nice to see a double uh to see like um to see not a double double what was i gonna say but to see um to see see a reply like that just very very calm i'm gonna play rook takes pawn here because he, he did not force me to castle early i can move the rook back to h4 h5 put the rook in the center of the board maybe move the king to e2 very very nice position for me so he goes knight before now let's use d's knights i have e5 or g5 let's go to e5 here knight g6 knight g5 ideas we're gonna get a very very beautiful checkmate incoming very soon i'm gonna take one way or another there's gonna be some kind of checkmate here with these knights can't bring the king up either goes king f8 so let's go check let's go check and now they're two mates i can go for the classic arabian checkmate with the rook and the knight but the really sexy checkmate here is to use these knights and cover all the critical squares king can't move anywhere so let's keep going next game all right we're playing blaze and western chess now again we have a london system now i played bishop f5 the previous time but this time i'm going to play a different setup yeah oh no. uh, my opponent's still deep in the ting Okay, goes knight f3. Let's play c5 here. Maybe I'll go queen b6. Maybe I'll play knight c6. Miami Mall shut down by police. There's rumors of 8 foot 10 aliens inside spread. Tweet by Dexerto. What? They're aliens at the Miami Mall? Wait, seriously? Wait, I, I gotta check that out. Uh, aliens. Wait, I gotta check that out. Um. Wait, I, I got I gotta check that out um for real one second. Let's see. Aliens. The aliens that invade the Miami Mall. Wait, what? Wait, that is this a joke? It looks kind of real, actually. I mean the tweets look real. Okay, wait, it's my move. Let's go knight c6 here. Um and maybe I'll play queen b6, maybe bishop g4. Yeah. Uh we're doing a viewer arena, you guys. That's what we're doing right now so get bishop b5 uh now the key here is do i play e6 or do i go bishop g4 or bishop f5 i think what i'm going to play here is i'm going to go bishop g4 try to pin the knight on f3 i can always go e6 or queen b6 down the road it takes i'll take back i'm going to play e6 i've got a nice little center here i do have the double pawns which is a slight issue but probably not a real issue because i can always trade on d4 play c5 and then I no longer have a double pawns I could trade the bishop for the knight but I I just want to keep the bishop on the board here since I can spy either the knight or the pawn on one of these diagonals and he forces me back but now I'm going to spy this diagonal instead goes knight e5 good move by the way um very good move actually so I think I'm going to go queen b6 guard the pawn from being captured while pressing the pawn on b2 He goes knight c3 and now i can play h5 i can also play queen b2 i think i'm just gonna take the pawn on b2 why not um so i'm gonna take the pawn on b2 if he takes the bishop i take back with the h pawn h3 pawn is under pressure i reconnect all my pawns in the center of the board 
goes queen c1 now i take the knight and the rest will be pretty basic Again, knight takes c6 being played here by um by blaze and western chest now the one issue i do have here is that my king is stuck in the middle of the board so i can't really castle my king anywhere so how do i finish my development or maybe i can trade but then there's some issues with knight b5 looming can't really kick the knight easily so i think what i'm going to do here is actually just eh, h5 is playable to try and attack it's not very it's not very standard so i'm looking for something a little bit more standard at beginner level which i think i'm looking for something more standard queen takes pawn is more standard because now i win the pawn and i offer the trade of the queens oh we get queen takes c2 So he plays 95 um now I could just trade the Queens here probably I should trade the Queens and maybe I go rook c8 or knight d7 I have an extra piece here I have two bishops and a knight he has a bishop and a knight I think I'm just gonna go knight d7 try to trade off the knight put the king on c6 blockade the pass pawn go bishop e7 bring my pieces into the game and long term with an extra horse I should win the game this guy's definitely not 300 he is So he plays a4 i'm gonna go c4 create the chain of four pawns here now i just go bishop b7 castle the king out of the center of the board and i should win pretty soon okay he plays h4 um i could take the pawn i can also just develop i think I I think I'm gonna put the bishop here so I can play a5 and this way he never gets an open file and so now I close the open file and it just gives me plenty of time to castle or bring the king to the center bring the rook into the game play here support the bishop go king e7 and then rook c8 and then start pushing the pawns up the board with like c3 and c2 I have the connected four yeah I do have the connected five now one two three four five classic connect five and I should win the game Can play rook c8 knight b6 i can also just go rook c8 c3 c2 honestly i think it's just very simple just push the pawn and try to make a new queen go see oh he hung the rook who cares just keep pushing for the themes are there aliens in the mall i don't know so so i heard he goes f5 i guess i will just take the pawn and we get the win let's keep going next game play e3 again now in the previous game where i had the black piece and he played bishop f5 um i think my opponent played knight f3 now the, the, the reason this is not played by a lot of people is because after c4 it gets very sharp because white is a little bit quicker with queen b3 ideas to hit the pawn on b7 and it's a little bit dangerous to play like there's there's a lot of pressure here and you don't get to play c5 with blacks so you'd be very very careful and i do believe after c4 knight c6 actually has to be played to counteract this where black plays a c6 b6 bad things tend to happen pretty quickly here i can take the pawn on d5 let's see what henrik does he takes with a pawn but now after knight c3 he's probably not going to be able to complete his development and we're going to get a classic ko with the london system very very quickly let's see what henrik does here he goes knight bd7 now he's trying to maybe go rook c8 i'm gonna go bishop a6 take away the square from the rook and then i'm just gonna go knight b5 knight c7 and win the game very very quickly do i like the london system i think it's playable up to a certain level i mean if you're playing casual i think it's a great basic opening to play if you're trying to become like a strong am amateur player or you're trying to become a professional i think it only works up to a certain point and then you need to look for other openings um but overall i think it's a pretty decent choice now he goes 94 now i could play bishop b7 to win the rook here because it has no squares available but what i'm going for here is i'm going for the big kill so i'm going to play um actually i realize there is e5 here in between so maybe we just keep it simple and i mm, 
let's go knight of three keep it simple finish our development and keep this idea of bishop b7 in our back pocket minley does play his main opening i think that's why minley is not a stronger player actually minley is a very very good player probably high 25 50s 25 60s i think it'd be, it'd be a little bit more um uh more diversity is the wrong word if his openings were a little bit broader i think he would actually do better i think he would be higher rate i think he'd be over 2600 if he had a little bit broader openings bit better positional understanding and he didn't just play the london system so i'm gonna take here if he takes back i just take back with the bishop which is also why knight of three was a good knight he goes bishop d6 now main problem for my opponent is he's lacking in development but he's also kind of losing all these pawns in the center i have these two extra pawns here and now everything is kind of hanging and including checkmate and uno let's keep going next game all right again i'm gonna play e3 here crazy how the one is played by beginners on world chess championships well i mean it can be played to avoid theory if you don't expect your opponent to be ready for it. it's a very logical choice but it's something that you don't play all the time it's one of those things that you try it out every so often like once every couple of months uh again my opponent puts a knight on c6 my opponents seemingly don't understand this uh system because they keep putting the knight here they probably need to watch the video that i did with pokimane or or Fusley on the london system because i actually explained black really generally does not want to put this knight here on c6 it's definitely um it stops any way of trying to trying to attack the center here if he takes i will take back with the pawn of fourth bishop of the knight if he takes i have queen g4 i've got knight f3 as well all the pieces are flowing to the king side here everything is flowing to the king side now we will play more blitz after this for anybody who's wondering we're not we're not done with blitz for the day i am still going to try to get back to uh 3300 later but for right now we're gonna do the view arena but we'll take the bishop here i can play queen takes d6 so i think the jobava london is more playable i played the jobava london in uh oh there goes the queen in the chess champions tour against noterbeck it didn't go very well normal london probably a little bit better he can't castle the king i can castle I have an extra queen on the board extra queen should be pretty straightforward here he could castle of course he could try uh, he goes rook d8 now i'll go here the pin should play completely let's just check me to one next game let's keep going uh jobava yeah daniel naroditsky and bornick both play the jobava london and bullet very specifically now i'm gonna go c5 again i don't like these knight c6 systems you gotta try to put pressure on the white center very very quickly let's play knight c6 c3 now i could play bishop g4 but i think in this case i'm gonna play e6 here keep the bishop at home inside the chain i want to go bishop d6 or bishop e7 Okay, let's go here. Try to trade off the bishops. I think I'm gonna go queen e7 to guard the bishop here and the pawn, and I want to thrust with e5 in the center. Castles, let's go e5 to break the center. Now we're gonna get a structure where white center is no longer intact. Basically, we've got the structure where I have two pawns versus these two pawns, and this is definitely, it's not like it's much better for black, but it's definitely preferable. So I'll trade the bishops here. This structure of the two pawns versus these two is, should be a small advantage, but he plays e4, which is actually a fantastic move that I had overlooked. And now white is actually maybe a little bit better here. So I'm gonna trade, and he gets rid of the weakness. You see, there's no weakness of e3 versus d5 now, and it's just c5 versus c3. I'm gonna castle queenside to keep this idea alive. Bishop h2, maybe knight f6 to fossilize the queen. There's queen e2. I think I'm just going to drop the bishop back. Now there's maybe a pin on the file here. I can go rook e8, pressure the knight and the queen. I have f5 to hit the knight as well. And it's looking a little bit dire here for white. A little bit dire. Okay, now I can just take the knight. He takes back, he loses queen, and I have a knight and bishop versus one knight. Let's take the queen. <clears throat> 
takes i'll go rookie eight stack the rooks on the file rookie one idea uh-oh ice skater time keep going okay again let's keep going with c5 that was oh no's exactly big oh no's um let's play knight c6 here can play bishop f5 i can also go queen b6 here i'm gonna play a different setup i just played e6 let's now go queen b6 try to pressure the pawn on b2 very very quickly let's see if my opponent knows how to deal with this there there are some of these cheeses like queen b6 where you can put a lot of stress on the white pawn structure very very early in the London he goes there I'm going to offer a free bishop because now I can take the pawn on b2 and win the rook in the corner so I'll trade I'll take and this is going downhill in a hurry the rook is trapped white will lose the rook now maybe white still has ways to keep the game going but it's pretty dire pretty dire here Nihal is farming Neeman. I, you know, it's funny actually. I challenged Hans earlier when I couldn't get a game. I did challenge Hans. Um, I guess I'll take the rook. Let's see if he knows how to trap the queen here in the corner. I did challenge him, but he didn't accept. I think that's when I was trying to play Jim de Grease. So, um, how's it going to Pomnishi? How you doing, Jan? I'm pretty sure that's not you, Jan. But if that is you, hope you're having a great day wherever you are in Russia. Um, it goes queen c2 good move now i'm going to try to finish my development here because even though i've won a rook and i'm going to get a second rook for the queen i'm a little bit behind in my development it's a real nepo i highly doubt it but it could be i highly doubt it goes 95 now I just castle two works for the Queen I finished my development so what I need now for the two towers I need open lanes I need open files for the rooks not easy to get open files but eventually I probably should be able to I am a random 2100 from Russia has been playing for 15 months nice to meet you awesome awesome hope you're enjoying the stream that's great 21 random 2100 from Russia that's like so so cliche but so true only in Russia is everyone like good at chess it is the one place where that's true I'm gonna trade the Knights here and I'll go Knight d7 hit the Bishop maybe Rook c8 no it's actually true Russia is the one place where it's like some you, there's just some ran, random chess player it doesn't matter where they're from but they're not like random 1000 level chess player. there's randomly like 2100 2200 like no big deal they just happen to be very very good at chess take the Knight um if he takes I can take the bishop now I've got a, two rooks and a horse for the queen I'm just gonna put a rook on c8 try to hit the pawn on c5 um and it's pretty good here favorite spice girl uh, I mean why would I have a favorite spice girl let's go 97 win the pawn on c5 stack the rooks on the c file now I've got an open lane for the rooks an open file here for the two towers and the rush would be very very straightforward go here take the file open files very very critical if you ever in a, are in an end game with two rooks versus a queen if you don't have open files and your opponent has like past pawns you're going to be losing most of the time I will take because I still have a horse on the board at the end of the day I have an extra horse so now it's just very basic with only pawns left but the but the horse will play trade less pawns let's go here go here win this one just less pawns no chance that he can ever get a queen now favorite tonight show host uh I, I mean that's a tough one because obviously I grew up with uh with, with Jay Leno I'm just gonna sack the horse here and create an create extra pawns on the board to win the game um I would say that probably if you I mean if you really force me to ask it's very tough because like I, I mean I watched Leno growing up I would probably have to say ultimately I'd go with Johnny Johnny Carson though I'd go with Johnny Carson if you if you if you ask me that's what I would say maybe that's a hot take but that's what I would say plays the h3 so again c5 h3 way too slow here wrong order Conan 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 no shot don't be silly you guys play knight six and hit the pawn on d4 he wasted time with h3 you usually don't play h3 until a few moves later and 
this is very very bad because now i'm just up a pawn in the center of the board that's also why you want to go c5 because you want to put pressure on these central pawns as quickly as possible let's just drop back why is everybody below 500 because my rating on this account is 500 we play unrated viewer arenas and so we're trying to give the lower rated players a chance to play and also we get sort of a simulation of how low lower rated players are likely to play such positions so like when you watch the video if you watch me playing as top guy you're gonna see only the best moves but here you get to see a lot of moves that people at your own level probably would play against you so i'm gonna go rook d8 if takes i can take i can still develop with bishop e7 down the road as well Now I'm just going to castle. Very simple and smooth. King is out of the center of the board. Up a pawn, up two pawns in the middle, I think. One, two, three, or five, six. Oh, no, only up one pawn. Can't count. Get bishop f3. I'm going to go knight d4 to hit the bishop on f3. So pretty normal so far. get g4 all right I think I mean there are many ways to play this but just simple here I have an extra pawn I've got uno dos uno dos tres cuatro cinco seis siete uno dos tres cuatro cinco seis I have an extra pawn on the board here so I'm happy to trade off trade off I said trade off twice yeah I'm happy to trade off the pieces because I have an extra pawn um he goes g5 now he's pushing p on the king side but he's creating weaknesses I could go knight h5 but general themes say that you don't want to put knights on the rim so I'm just going to go back offer more trades because at the end of the day one extra pawn is plus one that should mean that I can eventually win the game okay we get h4 um I will just trade here now I'm going to go f6 because I have castle the king but you'll notice he has a lot of weaknesses here after knight e5 f6 he's creating weaknesses he's pushing these pawns in front of his king you normally don't want to push your pawns in front of the king so i'm gonna go here of course it looks a little bit weakening but on the other hand it also starts to open up some very nice files and diagonals for the rook and the dark square bishop for me he goes king h2 many ways to win here but the simplest is just keep trading off win the pawn now you see why i open this file with this f6 pawn push or the pawn thrust because now my rook and my queen get in and it's just going to be a very simple straightforward checkmate or it should be but he, he dodges it with king h3 which to his credit is a good move i'm just going to go rook f8 idea rook f3 use this open lane and eventually there should be some kind of checkmate incoming here goes queen g1 i think is there a force check me I don't see a force check me so I'm just gonna go check take check and mate there we go let's go e3 knight f3 okay this looks very standard oh again another opponent puts the knight on c6 too early again you gotta push c5 you need to go after this white central pawn chain or this pyramid but he doesn't and again he's going to struggle here in the center of the board goes knight e4 so i will take and now i'm gonna go queen g4 try to pressure the pawns on g7 e4 maybe i trade maybe bishop h6 here i could also just trade everything off which i don't really love but it sort of fits the theme of the previous game where i just trade 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 take the pawn drop back extra pawn should be very good for me and now I, I could take but let's just for argument's sake not take the pawn and win the game immediately and i'll show you guys how you should win this position white has an extra pawn one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven so i'm going to start pushing b4 this way the pawns are glued black can never really get rid of these double pawns because i control this critical square on c5 so the pawns are stuck now i'm just going to drop back to c2 and these pawns are glued so i think i'll bring my rooks to the center of the board makes a lot of sense maybe I'll play e4 maybe rookie one e4 try to open up some files here with rookie one maybe bishop c4 pressure the pawn on e6 and this should become pretty good for me very very quickly with bishop c4 or bishop g4 let's go bishop c4 
I'm now going to go rook to d3, maybe rook h3, rook g3, rook e3. Multiple options here. Actually, I could also go queen h4, just hit the pawn and the rook, and then stack the two towers and go for the kill here on this e file. This looks very, very bad for black. I'll now go queen h3, overloading the pressure on the pawn, and black is in really, really bad shape. He goes to e5, I'll take the rook with check so he can't capture my queen. Let's take the pawn with check on the king. Let's make a check on h6 here. I, I still can just trade and go rook e7, create the kebab on the seventh, and the rest is very, very basic. Take a pawn, just gotta make sure there are no ice skaters here, so I'll create some space for my king. Let's trade. Let's go a4. d4, d5, and this should be pretty straightforward. Go next game. All right, let's go E3. Goes Now this guy plays C5, good move. Um, So I'm gonna go C3 to protect my structure. If he plays Queen B6, I can go either Queen B3 or Queen C2 here. He goes E6, so this gives me a little bit of time. I can bring the Knight this way, my protection of the pawn, very easy if he tries to go Queen B6. Best GM I've ever played would be uh, either Magnus Carlsen or Gary Kasparov. Both are very good. Both are incredible players. Okay, I'm going to go queen c2 to guard now because he gave me a little bit of extra time with this knight maneuver. So I'm going to go bishop g3 back. Normally when you have this option to trade the bees, you want to drop the bishop to g3 and capture with the age pawn. I never played Gary in a classical game of chess, but I played him a lot in rapid and blitz. Um, and just, I mean, what needs to be said about him? He's a great player. Yeah, what more needs to be said? He's a great player. Okay, now here, multiple captures. Um, I'm going to take with the E pawn, and the reason for this is that if I take with a C pawn after knight 6, there might be a knight before. And here I can basically try to prevent black from ever playing E5, and I still continue to develop very naturally. All right, so he goes knight c6. Uh-oh, that's a free bishop. Uh-oh, spaghetti-o. Uh-oh, spaghetti-o. Free bishop, and now he is going to... That's a Carlsbad structure from the great great city of Carlsbad in California. Um, but it's also reminiscent of the Carlsbad structure in the in the uh, exchange Carl Khan as well. Thanks for playing with me. I'm Robert TV. I'm going to watch, watch the VOD later. Yeah, great game. Now, I'm just going to develop here. I want to spy the pawn, but also just castle my king out of the center of the board. Just report the account, you guys. If there is someone who is cheating, report the account. There is a report button. You should be able to report it, and uh, chess.com will look at it, is my understanding, and probably he'll get banned, especially if, it's, if he beat a 2460. Yeah, if he beat a 2460, then yes. It's just castle, simple chess here. Probably I'll just go rookie one and 95. Those will probably be my next two moves. There's bishop d7. Let's play rookie one here, bringing everything to the center of the board here. I want to play 95 to try to take and go after this protection of the pawn on h7. Go here, 95. He'll probably take, if, again, it's, it's not like there's a specific plan behind this move, but I just want to trade material since I'm so far ahead here. good move but again i will just trade because i am way ahead of material to keep trading everything off because i have an extra horse here and it, the more you can trade off when you're ahead it's uh the easier it becomes i guess i'll just go check queen h7 or maybe queen c1 yeah i'm gonna go here and try to spy this pawn by moving the knight away on the next turn um let's get flashy here i'm gonna go knight e4 to go for the ladder checkmate where the king has no squares and i also have knight to f6 if he moves up yeah now just take checkmate 
that game was interesting the opening i mean blunder the piece but that one was much closer to what you would expect for normal opening okay levy rosman's lamp plays knight to c3 um now this is actually turning it from the regular jobava into the jobava london so this is this is the jobava london and i'm gonna play a6 to stop knight b5 the idea behind knight c3 is that you might want to go knight b5 but we're probably gonna have something very similar to the other system where i get to I get to attack a center with c5 and knight is in front of the pawn so that makes it hard he offers a trade again you always go back to g3 or g6 if you're at the beginner level do not ever trade the bishop on d3 or d6 i'll go knight d7 here now i'm gonna go c5 here and maybe i can take on d4 maybe go c4 do i remember the reference to levy's lamp i don't actually remember it maybe it is a reference i know there's hikaru's chair i don't remember Le levy's lamp um but i wouldn't be shocked i mean so much has happened over the last couple of years i mean so so many so many great moments and memories i mean sometimes you forget certain things so i wouldn't be shocked if there's this is part of a meme that i just don't know now i go c4 because i want to start taking a lot of space in the center of the board here potentially now he stops me so i'll just go here and castle i might want to go a5 and b4 down the road to try and open up the queen side but for right now let's just get our king out of the middle of the board goes h3 I'm gonna go h6 this way neither of us have these jumpers because we both have the created square on h2 and h7 for our b's so now I'm gonna go here a5 and b4 try to kick the knight away so I can jump with this knight to the classic e4 square see what he does Who, in your opinion, is the best chess player other than yourself? I mean, I'm not the best chess player, not even close to it. But I, I thank you for trying to stroke my ego. I'll trade the knights here. Uh, I'm going to go a5 and b4, try to play on the queen side here and open it up. Let's take with the bishop. Let's go b4 here. Go after the knight on c3. Takes, takes. I mean, I've got great scope for the bishop here. I've also got an open file for the rook on a8. Let's go rook a2. There's also c3 incoming potentially, and this is very, very bad for white. So when will you be in Germany? Do you know the city? I have some idea, but I, I haven't like made my plans yet. I'll take the takes now. Trade the queens. I've got this great connected pass pawn chain here of four. It's also a classic connect five as well. But with this extra pawn and the bishop spying this diagonal, I should be much better. Also, I can now reroute my other bishop to put pressure on the rook on e1. Let's go here. He's gonna lose one of the towers, and it should be pretty good. He goes rook c1. I'll take, I'll play rook a8, maybe rook b1, maybe rook a2. A lot of different possibilities. Okay, now I'll just trade because I have an extra pawn to push up the board. Also, his bishop on f3 doing nothing. It's literally staring at a pawn chain. So his bishop is just doing absolutely zilch on the f3 square here, just staring at a classic pawn wall. Magnus is better than Gary Kasparov, but of course Magnus is only Magnus because of Gary Kasparov and his contributions to chess. I'll play rook a3. If knight takes bishop, I'll go rook a1. Hikaru sounds like you make a good sports chess commentary. You know, it's funny, when I was a kid, um, I actually grew up listening to uh, to sports games on the radio, and one of my, my one of my hopes was that I might become a sports broadcaster one day. That was one of my hopes. I was hoping that one day maybe I'd be able to broadcast, uh, do some broadcasts of games, so... All right, let's just make a queen. He takes. I'll just take the pawn. Go king f6 here. Extra queen, extra rook for a bishop, and I should be winning. I guess I'll go check, collect the bishop. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. No, I, I when I was young, I listened to a lot more. Um, the, I listened to a lot of baseball games, specifically on the radio. Um, so so if, I, if you were to ask me to do uh, do commentary of a sport, it would definitely be uh, it would definitely be uh, baseball. When I, no, when I was growing up, the Yankees broadcast was on 770, 770 AM. It was not on 660, which is WFAN. Um, it was on 770, which I don't know. What, what is 770? I should Google that. 770 AM, New York. Uh, it was on 770. It was not on 660. Um, play C3, protect the center of the uh, center center of the chain. Let's go Knight F3 here. I'm going to go Knight BD2 here. Now, now he put the bishop on f5, so I can't actually get my standard setup. So I'm going to go bishop e2 and castle this this way. Now, again, I'm going to take with the e pawn here. So if I take with the c pawn, there's knight b4, and there's pressure towards the c2 square. Let's just castle. 
Okay, now I if I, I can go bishop g3 because he's put this knight in the center of the board. It's a slightly different setup, so I'm actually going to trade the bishops here. I'm going to go here, take this knight, and try to get my juicer to e5 if I can. It's a little bit different here because we already traded the pawns and he's got a knight on e4. So it's slightly different than the other position. So in this one, I am trading. You could still go back to g3 though. So I'll take. I'm going to put my juicer on e5 here. 770 AM WABC exactly yes that's what it was so I grew up listening to a lot of baseball games I mean I pretty much listened to everything like baseball basketball hockey but definitely baseball more than anything else like I'll never forget when I was growing up listening to the Yankees and um there was a game the famous game the fateful game it was 19 it was 19 um um one second I'm gonna go after to kick the bishop it was 1996 the Yankees were playing the Baltimore Orioles I forget I think it was game one of the eighth inning right it was the eighth or was it the ninth because they brought in Armando Benitez and um I, I'll never forget listening to that game on the radio and Jeter hit a ball into right field and, and the ball should have been caught but I remember when I was listening it was like you could literally hear the announcer he was he was about to say and it's caught and it's caught and it's caught and then he had to say and it's a home run or I think that's what he said if I remember correctly um so it was just very funny because that was obviously when the fan reached over, grabbed the ball, and was ruled a home run. And the Yankees beat the Orioles like they always do because Baltimore sucks. Let's see what my opponent will do here. He can trade the Queens. He can also go back. Um, but this looks like a pretty pretty good position for me. Good knight versus bad bishop here. I can also go knight c6 maybe. Um, I also have a slight majority here. I've got a two-on-one on the queen side. I can push both these two pawns, and my opponent can't. Will there be Master Chef uh, today? Uh, probably a little bit later on. There will be. Yeah, there will be. Yeah, yeah. Goes Bishop C2, which is a phenomenal move. I'm actually really impressed by that move. I did not think my opponent would find that. That is a fantastic move. But he doesn't leave the Bishop there, which now means the file is back in play potentially for my Rooks here. I can always go A4 and go King E3, King D2. Yeah, people are asking silly questions like it like about Kramnik at this point like you know it, it's all pretty much in the past I think I think people who want to ask about it there's a very simple thing that I would say which is when people make false accusations um and 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 accuse people of cheating like there, there's a limit to how much of that people are willing to take and, and also as, as I said before like you know when you when you start using math it's just bad it's been disproven by multiple sources like it's very hard to take someone seriously so I'm gonna go check I can take the pawn on e6 and it's also very abundantly clear to me at this point the whole cramming thing at this point he's just carrying on because he doesn't like me and that's his prerogative he doesn't have to like me he doesn't have to like that I called him out on on his nonsense I mean he obviously is a massive ego um as a former world champion so like that's his prerogative he wants to but it's not as at this point it's not based on anything other than just jealousy and and, and being really really upset at the fact that he was called out on something that's all it needs to really be said that's all I need to say um now I'm gonna go king b4 I have rook a6 here hit the pawn on a7 king b4 king c5 should be pretty good okay so he's still thinking let's see what he plays here he's thinking for a long time uh I think I can trade because I with I'm up a pawn here on the outside and I can just go a5 trade the pawns and with this extra pawn our pawn structures are symmetrical here so it doesn't matter I just go b6 king b5 king let's all play f4 let's go g3 take no way he can get a pass pawn here the pawn structure is completely locked and now I'm just free to push p make a queen and win the game he resigns next game goes knight c3 so we're back in the Joe Bob I'm gonna play a6 and stop knight b5 um I guess I mean I can play e6 or bishop f5 I think there's a Samuel Shanklin course on the Jababa one where he recommends e6 and bishop b4 but I'm gonna go bishop f5 here and just e6 knight d7 c5 same kind of general structure here knight on c3 white cannot pressure my center so now I'm gonna pressure his center very quickly to drop back of course go rook c8 try to plan this open c file if we can goes bishop e5 um I could just take why not takes the bishop I can go bishop d6 he takes with the pawn uh oh spaghetti oh there goes the knight uh did I get back to 3300 I'm currently 3270 I'll probably make one more run today and try to get back but 
no guarantees because it's still a long way out now here i'm going to take with the pawn mainly to stop him from getting a square for the horse in the center of the board this pawn stops the knight from jumping i'll guard the rook pressure the pawn create the classic right triangle uh and now sack the rook for the defender remove the defender and go for checkmate in one with queen h2 isn't it doll done i don't know let's go e3 again he goes e6 okay knight f3 c5 c3 gotta protect the structure go knight d2 now the one drawback to black playing e6 and keeping the bishop inside the chain is that now i have bishop d3 and i get the scoped bishop which can target everything from this d3 square h6 let's just castle now takes i can take either way i'm gonna take with the e pawn again basically try to try to grip this e5 square if i can let's go rook e1 I played the Jabava London against Noterbeck in the chess champion sewer, and it did not work out very well. Now he's trying hard to play e5 to open up the scope for the light square b, so I'm gonna shut the door with this move knight e5. It's called the Jobava London because Jobava Badur, the famous Georgian grandmaster, uh, was more or less the inventor of it. He might have been the first guy who ever played it, but he really popularized it. He played it in a lot of different games. A lot of the modern theory was developed off of games which he played. So let's go f4 over protect the horse in the center of the board now it's a common thing theme in this carlsbad london exchange caro structure here where you try to over protect the horse goes knight f6 uh, i'm gonna go g4 and maybe g5 so i want to start attacking on the king side as quickly as possible where can i meet you i might do a meetup down the road we'll see uh, i'm gonna go knight f3 over protect the knight again now I'll take with the F pawn to build an even longer connect five. And I have ideas like G5, Bishop C2, Queen D3. A lot of good stuff happening here. Black also can't really go after my pawn structure. It's so, so solid here due to these four pawns. These four pawns are incredibly strong here. It goes King F8. Let's go G5. You can meet him at the nearest Costco. That's actually true. I, I was at Costco yesterday um, on my off day. That's what I did. So there's somebody who said I was studying chess. No, I was actually at Costco shopping, but it wasn't the greatest experience ever yesterday because unfortunately at costco there were far less sales than usual maybe because it's the start of the new year we go here and hit the pawn in age six far less sales so it was still nice but like it wasn't quite the same as usual where like there are a bunch of things uh bunch of things you know so let's go work f1 let's use this open file and put pressure 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 i can line up a triple stack and go after this pawn let's go here rook f1 next move pressure everywhere and now we've got a class that connects six as well um let's go rook f1 i was not at costco for 12 hours <laughs> but let's go here pressure the pawn really trying to put pressure at the base of the chain here on f7 let's go here look at this king look at this very very serious weakness on f7 black is really really struggling here so let's see what we get goes knight a5 uh is this just checkmate that's just checkmate it's a, it's a double check and it's made here the king can't move anywhere it's just gg on the spot so all right next game let's keep rolling goes c3 okay i'm now c3 is actually one of the modern approaches i lost the game in the uh tata seal event last year against nihal sarin c3 is one of the approaches to try and prevent bishop f5 so i'm gonna play e6 and c5 we'll probably transpose back into a regular line now They had some jalapeno chips, which were pretty bussin' um, at Costco yesterday for the samples. So I'm gonna play Bishop D6 and Cows. You know, Levy is the best streamer of the year, even though he streams only on Tuesdays. Like I said, all those awards, I just don't care about them. I haven't for a long time. I mean, it really, like, I don't wanna speak negatively about the whole thing, but it's it's a popularity contest. And I mean, Levy is gonna get the most votes on any number of things because he has the biggest following. That's just the reality. And I know people can be unhappy about that or whatever, but you know, at the end of the day, it's not really that big of a deal. And I guess, you know, what I really wish though, if we look at the award, those award type things, I really wish that chess.com would do those only for people who are below a certain size. So it doesn't do it. Like if you think about it, if someone, someone who has like, let's just say a smaller YouTube channel or a smaller Twitch stream gets recognized, that's actually going to do a lot towards raising their profile. Like if there's some voting on myself or Levy or whatever, it does absolutely nothing for, for any of us. It does nothing whatsoever. Um, so that's maybe the one thing that I kind of wish. That, that's the one thing that I do kind of wish. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna take the pawn. If he takes with the bishop, I can take the knight and win the bishop. If he takes with the knight, I'm probably trade the bishops here. 
Yeah, I mean, that's maybe the one thing that I kind of wish when I think about the whole thing. I mean, I'm talking about the chess.com specifically, is that it's like there's really no need for that. What they should have is they should just have like a rising streamer award or like up and coming streamer, something like that. Because everyone who's been streaming for, because I mean, everyone who's big at this point has been streaming for several years now. Everybody has been. Uh, I mean, I can't think of anybody who's big who hasn't been streaming since the pandemic, basically. If he takes, I'll take back, I'll take, and I'll play rook d8 next move. Material is even here after after white takes a pawn on c4. Um, but I can just go b6, bishop b7. He's also got the isolated pawn on d4. This tournament's unrated because obviously the rating of my account is 500. If I play and it's rated, I'm going to win every game and people are going to lose ratings. That's the problem. Goes queen a4. Of course I'll trade because I simply have one extra pawn. Now I'll trade. I'll go b5 and I support the pawn. I can go a6 here. Nice chain of three. We've got one, two. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to go bishop d7. Rook protects the rook so I can capture and keep my chain alive. What's your favorite fruit? I don't know. I'm not from the US and Fed says inflation is dipping. How are the price in the Costco compared to pre-COVID? Um, I don't know if you want to hear my take on that because my, my take is not the take that people want to hear. My take on that is that for the average person, when they say inflation is down, I'm not seeing it. There are a lot of things that I see that are still very expensive. And I, I mean, I know the numbers ultimately are saying inflation is down, but I, I don't really believe it, actually. I don't. When I look at the price of a lot of things like at Costco or otherwise, like just everyday goods, they, they still look very overpriced to me compared to what I was used to. Um, but like, if I say that, and everyone's like, well, now you sound like one of those conspiracy theorists who's saying like the Fed, you know, Fed and everybody, they're rigging the numbers and this and that and the other things. Let's go check here. So I don't know for the, for the average Joe who, who does, who doesn't have a lot of money. I, I don't really think price have come down that much. I think it's still very, 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 very bad for most normal people. Let's go B4 here. Like, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, things are still way too expensive. Let me go B4, hit the knight here. Maybe bishop B5, maybe C3. Goes knight E4. Okay, I'm just going to trade the knights. Go bishop B5. I want to push C3 here. Rook targets the bishop on F1. Goes up for it. Now we create the check on the bishop and the king. I can take, make a queen. I can also just take the bishop. No, no need to take and make a queen. And I'm just going to go c2. The only issue is, of course, I don't want to allow some kind of ice skater with my king getting stuck with these pawns in front of the king. Knight f3. Okay, now this time, what have I, which system have I not played yet that I can play? I'm going to play g6. This is a different system. It's like a Grunfeld slash King's Inny. I do not recommend playing the system most of the time because I think it's very hard to understand the themes. Let's go bishop g7 here. I guess I'll just castle, maybe play c5 and knight c6. Okay, so I'm gonna castle, go c5, then knight c6, and we'll roll from there. Because then I can open up the scope for the bishop on the super long diagonal, potentially. But also, knight, I think I'm gonna go here, open up the scope immediately, because now I can maybe capture the knight or the pawn. So white has big issues here on the diagonal, as well as with the pawn on c5. Let's take the pawn. Uh-oh, Spaghetti is losing the rook. Now, I could take the rook, but in this case, when he moves the knight to d2, I'm not going to take because I'm a little bit worried about the dark score weaknesses around my king. So I'm just going to take the pawn, drop the juicer back, keep the king safe with the classic fianchito here with bishop g7, and then my king should always be very, very safe. Are paper paychecks still a thing? I don't know, but I do write checks every so often. Um, go knight a4. Like sometimes, sometimes, like it's kind of annoying. Like if you want to donate to charity and. Um, it's like there's a there's a um, there's a fee if you use a card. So sometimes I consider writing checks. Um, I know that was the question, but all right, I'm gonna go knight c3, fork the queen and the rook, hit the pawn on a2. My position looks very very pleasant. Uh oh, here comes a fork, um, and I'll take the rook on b1. Do you have a nice car? I just have a Honda Civic, nothing special. Um, it 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 works, it works. Play knight takes rook. Okay, now I can go e5, big black center, bishop guards the pawn. I also have e4 looming with the classic fork, forking the queen and the bishop with the two pawns. Owns Tesla stock, buys Honda Civic. Tesla's gonna be very interesting. I'm, I'm looking at a very nice win in Tesla at the moment. I bought Tesla at 190 right before Norway chess, and I sold 230 calls for January. Uh, and Tesla's at 237. I sold those calls for 20 bucks. So right now I'm 13 bucks ahead. 
I don't know what I'll do with my Tesla stock if it uh, if it closes below 230 in two weeks. Not really sure. Um, now I'm, I'm hitting the queen. I'm hitting the rook on e4 and b1. I have queen b, queen d1. Ice skater ideas in play as well. Rush should be pretty basic here. Is English your native language? Yes, it is. Now I'm sacking the bishop. Oh no, I hung a bishop. Oh no, what am I doing? Oh, but I have queen d1 with the classic ice skater. As with almost anything in life, when something looks too good to be true, it usually is like <coughs> crypto. <coughs> Anyway, next game, let's keep going. All right, I'm gonna play E3 here. Um, I think I'll go Knight F3 next move. Uh, may maybe I'll play C4, let's go Knight F3. Uh, maybe I'll play Bishop D3 or Bishop G3. Let's see what my opponent goes. Normally something, something, when something looks like it's too good to be true, usually it is. Let's play Knight BD2 here. Um, I'm gonna go H3, so Knight H5, I can go Bishop H2. And I'm going to go C3 next move just to protect my pawns in the center of the board. We've got the standard uh, setup here with these these uh, five pawns. Uh, that's just a free pawn. Just a free pawn. I met someone who doubles his money buying bullets. Actually, speaking of those things, one you know what the best investment of all time, I think, is? The best investment of all time, I think, is Legos. Like, Lego unopened Lego sets like they appreciate like nothing else actually so like if you have spare cash that you want to like buy stuff with buy those lego sets and then just leave them in your attic for five years or ten years and those will go up immensely i think leg legos are up like more like legos go up more than anything else literally i i think legos are like the best best investment not joking the original legos if you have an original lego set my god that's got to be worth like hundreds of thousands of dollars at least like if you have an original Lego set from like the first like five to ten years of their existence, like fifties or sixties, those are probably worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, I'm gonna pressure the pawn on f5 here. Eight to eleven percent of Lego. I have many Lego sets, but I don't have unopened ones because obviously I bought them and I put them together. I even have a few here in Florida, but I'm gonna go c4. So what do I want to do in this game I think what I want to do is I want to trade some material because I, again I, I'm up a pawn one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six so I'm up I'm up uh one pawn after 95 he's got a weak king here now I'm up two I guess open ones appreciate in value it depends on the rarity and condition I mean I, I have plenty of them that are put together just sitting sitting all over the place but um yeah I know Legos appreciate tremendously Okay, it goes to c5. Now, if I take, I lose the queen. So I think I can go e4 here. Pawn attacks the queen, but it guards my queen. And I threaten to win the bishop, win the knight on f6 here. So I should actually be much better. Should be much better. Goes queen e6. Um, that's a good move. I will trade the queens. I think I'm going to go rook c1 here. He can't take the pawn because then he loses the uh, rook on c8. And what I really want to do is maybe take and go d5 at some point. That's my idea, at least, if I can. So I'll take go d5 I'm gonna to try to create a classic connect four of pawns here on the center of the board if I can go d5 what's after I'm probably gonna play more blitz we have some articles I might try to cover I'll figure out exactly what I'm doing I don't know yet wow Verizon amazing stock let's take the take the rook on e6 take on f7 take the bishop on c1 um and now I just have an extra horse a bunch of extra pawns 56 seconds can he survive long enough with 149 left very unlikely I'm gonna move quickly to try to finish off this game go king here king e2 of course if c4 i go a4 i break the chain of two and i should be winning what time is master chef i don't know i don't know if we'll get to master chef today i'm gonna play rook b2 hit the pawn take the pawn let's go here let's take the pawn do i play any sports other than chess i ooh, there's a fork i grew up playing uh tennis took a lot of tennis lessons when i was younger let's go here and checkmate in one no way to stop it there we go. We got the win. All right. So I'm going to take a short break, you guys. I'm going to go use the restroom. We're going to come back. I'm going to splash some water on my face, get some more coffee. And we're going to take another run at it. I'm going to make another big run at um, at 3,300. So I'm going to take a big run at it. Uh, and I will be right back. So give me a couple of minutes, you guys.